Thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Charlotte Bromley and I'm the campaign organizer with Environment Oregon. We are a statewide citizen-based environmental advocacy group. I'm joined here today by Brett Gallagher, who is one of the co-owners of Cascadia Expeditions, and as well as members of our field team, our citizen outreach team. I'm going to make a few remarks and then I'm going to turn it over to Brett. So, today on the heels of the 42nd anniversary of the Clean Water Act, we're here to celebrate how this bedrock environmental law has brought so much progress to Oregon's rivers already, as well as to highlight the huge need for proposed rules to restore protections to over half of Oregon's streams. Our message today is clear. The Clean Water Act has brought progress to Oregon's rivers, but the law's promise is not yet fulfilled. All of Oregon's rivers and streams deserve a success story. Waterways Restored, a series of case studies compiled by Environment Oregon Research and Policy Center, tells the story of how Oregon's rivers are cleaner now than they were when the Clean Water Act was passed more than 40 years ago. Once so polluted that salmon fingerlings died within being placed of the water within 15 minutes, the Willamette is now on its way back to health thanks in part to the enforcement of water quality standards required by the Clean Water Act. Today, after 20 years of effort, the volume of sewage overflows into the Willamette has been cut by 94%, allowing Oregonians once again to swim in the river. Now, while the Willamette River is protected by the Clean Water Act, over 61,000 miles of streams in Oregon are not thanks to a loophole in the law secured by developers and other polluters nearly a decade ago. Now these are the very streams that lead into our beloved rivers like the Rogue, the Columbia, the Willamette, and the Deschutes. In March, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency proposed a rule to restore protections to the headwaters, streams, and wetlands left in limbo by this loophole. But oil companies, agribusinesses, and other developers are campaigning bitterly against it. And last month, the U.S. House of Representatives voted to block this rule. We applaud Congressman Blumenauer, Congressman DeFazio, and Congresswoman Bonamici for standing up to polluters and standing with Oregonians in their waterways. And we continue to express our disappointment in Congressman Schrader and Congressman Walden for voting to oppose this effort. The truth is that there is tremendous support for this rule. There is support from environmental groups, from ordinary citizens, from small business owners, and from farmers. And tomorrow, in fact, our staff in D.C. will deliver over 200,000 public comments to the EPA in support of this rule, over 26,000 of which have come from Oregonians. So while Oregon's rivers are definitely getting cleaner, the fact is that polluters are dumping over 1.2 million pounds of toxic chemicals into our waterways every year. And the only way to continue Oregon's rivers on the path to success is to restore Clean Water Act protections to the headwaters, streams, and wetlands that lead into our rivers. We only have until November 14th to get this rule over the finish line, so we need everybody to sign a public comment, to make a call into their representative, and to write a letter to the editor. This is the best chance that we have to restore protections to all of Oregon's waters. Thank you very much, and I am now going to turn it over to Brett. Thanks, Charlotte. My name is Brett Gallagher, and I am a small business owner, also a native Oregonian. And uh, my, my formal training has been in fisheries ecology, so I know a little bit about water and I know a little bit about fish. I also know about having fun on the water and all the great things in Oregon has to offer us natural resources that are available to us here for recreation, for peace of mind. Um, I know nature can be calming and soothing for a lot of people, and I think Oregon is a great state that showcases all the wonderful things that we have here. Um, and not only is it just nice to enjoy from an aesthetic beauty standpoint, you know, I make my livelihood on our queen waters, and we offer rock climbing, we offer rafting trips, and most of the areas that we go, even rock climbing, we have beautiful fresh rivers running right nearby, um, you know, obviously getting folks, group, 
groups, groups that get together for family adventures or family reunions. I did several bachelorette parties on the whitewater stretches of the rivers this year. And uh, you know, the, the way people come together when they're outside having a good time, you know, uh, we have beautiful wild and scenic rivers here in Oregon. And that's because of the Clean Water Acts and other things. You know. um, just this summer alone, I think we ran over 180 participants on the Willamette River down in Corvallis doing kayak tours. Um, we did craft brew tasting events on the river. And all, all these have in common a river that was once so polluted, people treated it as an open sewer. You know, and now I'm able to take groups of school kids there. And we're looking at the macroecology of the bugs and all the critters that live in the water and that are healthy in these stream systems because people care, because people put provisions in place to protect these natural environments. Another project that I'll share with you today, I've been working to get youth that have been incarcerated at the Oak Creek Youth Facility out on adventures to be able to appreciate this natural world and realize that maybe there's something for me beyond what I was doing before I got in trouble, right? Maybe there's a way to have fun in this state that doesn't involve risky behavior or drugs or alcohol or those types of things. So we've been able to put together some trips for women in the Young Women's Transition Program for Oak Creek Youth Facility. And we've done several rafting trips and I'd like to just share a quote from one of the ladies that was on our trip. Being in nature is very powerful. It makes me feel peaceful and it inspires me to want to do good things and to do good in life. These adventures show me that there are beautiful places to go where I can enjoy being outside and being sober. Wind in my hair, not one single care. That's just one opportunity that the young woman had to get out on a clean river and to enjoy Oregon in all its natural splendor. And we ask you to continue to help us protect these rivers and streams and make these things accessible to all people in our community. Thanks. Thanks. Do you have any questions that for either of us? <laughs> yeah. um, or for our citizen outreach team who goes door to door talking to people every day? What kind of questions do people, where are you going first of all? Uh, right now we're in uh, like the Hollywood neighborhood as well as Tualatin. All right. Uh, we've been going. Uh, we talked to people in the Dallas. We've been like all over. Okay. All over the and what, what are you talking to them about? Um, basically, that there's this really great opportunity right now to get these loopholes closed, but we need the public to actually be really vocal about it uh, because obviously the opposition has a lot more money to spend being vocal. Yeah, that looks great. Great. Um, all right. Thank you. 